No matter where you are in the world, your car might be your best weapon. Hey everybody, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your usual host, John Correa, but with me today is force science analyst, ASP CEO, and evidence-based defensive trainer, Stephanie Widener. Let's look at all of these different videos to see what lessons we can learn. Filster is one of my trusted holster makers with great offerings like the floodlight and trauma medical equipment to keep you and your loved ones safe. They're one of the few companies that I trust to make a quality product at a good price, and I thank them for sponsoring today's video. First one here, you can see our victims coming towards us and this guy in the you know, SUV is trying to block him in and keep him from going back and forth. So guy's gonna try to back up again and you can see two dudes coming kind of out of the shadows here. And once our defender recognizes that, rather than having the gunfight with guys, he hits the reverse and the gas pedal, gets the heck out of the danger zone and protects himself. All right, here's the next one. We have our car pull up. He's kind of switched on, leaves a little room, which is great, but then this car pulls in. Guy gets out with a tire iron and gets booped right on the snoot as this guy again decides to just take off rather than get out and fight. Third one, we're gonna see a pinching action there as he comes in, tries to keep this uh, delivery truck from backing away from him, but the driver is in gear and ready to rock, gets the heck out of there, looks like he almost ran his buddy over doing it, and gets out of the danger zone, and now all of our attackers are like, wait, what, what do we do from here? They get in their cars and run off. We got a few lessons to think about here. One of the things that Stephanie does the most with is the Active Self Protection National Conference. She's the reason it happens, so Steph, tell us about it. Oh, I absolutely love the National Conference. I think it is the best deal in in-person training around the country. For a $600 donation to Flint Hills Foster Teen Camps, you can come and train with some of the best trainers from across the country for three days, both classroom and live fire, any skill level. We include all kinds of things. There's several meals included. You can stay there in the dorms if you choose to at no extra cost. It's just a great opportunity to meet with like-minded people, have some fellowship, hang out with us and learn a bunch. And do good at the same time. Mm. So come and join us, would you? In this first one, we see this kind of action with some regularity stuff that, that we see a, a car that is trying to block them in. And I think we think about this, first of all, as a driving problem, right? Right, for sure. I mean, why is this person doing it? And, and I think that, you know, our first bet is like, what is this idiot doing here? Right. Uh, and so he tries to go around him. And when the guy moves a second time to block him in, that's when we got to recognize, okay, wait a minute, something's really off here. Right. And he does a great job of not staying in that, trying to figure out what is happening. He just immediately accepts that something bad is going on and he's got to get out of here. And I think that really helped him out. And so back and forth a couple times, once he recognizes, I think it's when he sees the pedestrians that he really says, nope, I got to get out of here. And I think big lesson here, being able to drive your car fast in reverse. Right, right, for sure. All and right, then, let's think about our second one here. Now we see the guys make the beeline towards them. Right, and this guy was already fairly switched on. You could tell by the way he was lining up and driving. So he has to immediately recognize as this person pulls into his lane one way that something bad is about to happen. And he does. And, and I love the fact that he didn't hesitate here. And, and again, when we're talking about places where we see carjackings like this, all the time. I think these are the kinds of things that we got to be prepared for. And again, continues to use the car. So you see the guy get out there and you can see the crowbar that he's got. This is a deadly threat. Yeah, for sure. And he's obviously going to get out and approach the driver door. And, and so uh, again, when we talk about when can we use deadly force, when could we use the car against an attacker? Well, we use a car, the use of a car against an attacker is a use of deadly force without question, but it's justified when we face a risk of death or great bodily harm ourselves. Right. We tend to get, you know, wrapped up in purpose driven weapons like guns as those being deadly weapons, but, but cars, tie irons, baseball bats, knives, all of these things are deadly weapons and can be used interchangeably. Absolutely. So, so listen, when you've got that though, and I think some people would want to draw a gun here and have a gunfight, but at this kind of distance through a windshield, you don't know what a bullet's going to do. Probably the car's your best bet. Mm -hmm. Likely you're at least going to have to go through your windshield, if not two. And <laughs> here we see why the car is the most effective weapon I think he could have chosen in this situation. It's fantastic. I just think we can make a gif out of this. Just the <laughs> door booping him again just and again. Over and again. And over. I love this still on this. He, this guy is radically rethinking his life choices in this moment. Yeah, 100%. And, and again, I think this is the safest bet for the people inside the victim car is to use this vehicle to to, to get this guy out of the way and carry on. And and get, listen, he paid the band, so he gets to dance the dance 100%. here. 100%. And, and so again, though, I think it gets you out of the danger zone as quickly as possible, and the bad guy gets a little bit of instant street justice, which he deserved anyways. Right. And he took a little damage to that car, but in the whole scheme of things, I think that was really the right call. Yeah, so certainly time. nothing compared to what he would have taken with a gun. Yeah. This last one, we see that, that pinching technique again. Mm -hmm. We see that all the time in carjackings. It's something to be absolutely aware of. You see somebody come in and cut you off like that. They're trying to prevent you from leaving. This is a time when we have to 
you know, take necessary steps to make ourselves safer. And I think that our driver really did that here. And notice here that he's gonna get on his brakes and get the car in gear as fast as he can. I think a good reminder here, if you're in the car, it should be running. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great reminder. And it looks like the guy in the back was kind of realizing something was going on and he just sort of started pokily moving to the passenger side door and he paid the price for not moving decisively. Yeah, that's very true. Here. <laughs> so I would say you get in your car, I would start the car, lock the doors, put your seatbelt on, even if you're going to leave it in park or something like that. Having the vehicle running gives you an advantage because it lets you act quickly. And that's exactly what he did here is that even though he was sitting, the car was clearly running. So all he had to do is put it in gear and rock and roll. Of course, I think, you know, you want to get an A in this. You have the car in gear while you are sitting. So then that way you can go off and just put your foot on the brake or whatever. But remember here, use the vehicle. Keep aware of what's going on. Of course, your vast majority of problems when you're driving are going to be driving problems mm -hmm. and not carjacking problems. Right. But when we can drive well and think about how am I going to protect myself if something goes down here, I think it helps us. I think it can do nothing but help you. All right, Steph, thanks so much for the lessons today. Thank you.